Thou hast prevented our ruin in the presence of our God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. The Assumption of Our Lady in the Heaven fills us with joy and gives us great reason to have confidence in the midst of all these sorrows in this valley of tears that is our own world. Our Lady is also our Mother in Heaven, guiding us through these sorrows. And I wanted to use the opportunity of this feast to tell you about a monument of the sorrows of children I recently encountered. When returning from my mission trips uh, on this past week, I stopped at Ovatonna, Minnesota, where from the years 1885 to 1945 was situated the Minnesota State Public School for dependent and neglected children. Nowadays, the site hosts an orphanage museum, and during the 60 years' history of this orphanage, over 10,000 orphaned, dependent, and neglected children were placed there. It was at its crowdest during the Depression area of the 1930s, when the orphanage housed 500 children at the one time. When the children entered this orphanage, they became, so to speak, wards of the state. Ages ranged from babies to age 18. The goal of the orphanage was to provide a provisional home for the children before placing them out for adoption. Some children did find good homes, but others suffered difficult and humiliating experiences and while the intention was not to institutionalize children, many spent their entire childhood there. A small child or baby, upon arrival in this orphanage, he was placed in the nursery, put in total isolation for three weeks, during which time a physical, various tests and immunization shots were given. The goal was place the small child out for adoption as quickly as possible. This often did not happen, and as a result, the small child's early mental development was greatly hindered. As soon as the age permitted, every child was assigned a job, typical boys' jobs uh, where, like scrubbing and polishing floors, mowing lawns, uh, cleaning streets, helping garbage haulers, shoveling walks, and working in the garden or daily barns, bakery, hospital, laundry, or nursery. Typical girls' jobs were assisting with housework, scrubbing and polishing floors, working in the kitchens, dining room, nursery, or hospital, or laundry, and caring for younger girls, or waitressing for employees' dining room, or helping with summer vegetables and fruits during canning season. Some children had to arise as early as at 5 a.m. to start their job, while all other children rose at 6 a.m. Bedtime was 7.30 p.m. year-round. One of the former girls in the orphanage later remembered her time at the ward. The girls that worked in the main kitchen had a 5.30 a.m. wake-up call. All other girls were up at 6 a.m., after the wake-up call, they immediately had to make their bed perfectly or remade it until it was perfect. Then they folded their blankets and returned them to the cupboard until evening. After making their bed, they proceeded downstairs to a big room called the assembly room to dress by their chair. In this assembly room, each child had their own chair. After dressing, the children had to sit in their chair until it was time to go to breakfast in the main building. Absolute rules when sitting in the chair were first feet flat on floor, two arms folded across chest, three knees together, four total silence. In the evening, they took their blankets out of the cupboard. They were in bed with lights out at 7.30, 8 or 8.30 p.m., depending on their age. The only exception was Christmas Eve, when everyone could stay up until 9 p.m. 
Absolutely no talking was allowed after lights out. And because of their job assignments, children did not have school homework in the evenings. All schoolwork was completed in the classroom. It was new to learn uh, that each child of school age received 60 minutes of religious training each week. In truly, in our day and age, it sounds incredible that a state school would uh, seem as its duty to provide religious training to their children, but this was what it happened. Most churches in the community provided instruction for baptism, confirmation, first communion, and church membership. In addition, many children attended services in the local churches. Some churches provided transportation. Some children walked downtown to attend the church. They were also required to attend the general chapel service held on Sunday morning at 8 a.m. in the auditorium. Pastors in the city took, leading the, took turns leading the morning chapel services. Despite that the school tried to keep up the strong sense of community, it was truly heartbreaking to learn how lonely and abandoned most of the children felt. For example, children's birthdays, they were never celebrated. Many children never even knew when their birthday was. Siblings may have entered the orphanage together, but later were separated by the school indenture or adoption. Many were never reunited. One school inmate later recalled this, the saddest day of my life was when I learned my brother was going to be adopted out. I had already lost the rest of my family. Now I would lose my last brother. The museum has still retained one of the boys' cottages, and the boys of that place had these kind of memories. Very little love and kindness. It was about how tough you were. I was only six years old and so afraid of Miss Morgan, our matron. Working, a prison, sleeping two in a bed, other boy wet the bed, but I got whipped for it. One bad beating from Miss Morgan, I thought she was going to kill me, all because I took off my necktie walking to school. No matter how cold you got on the playground in the winter, you could not come in until everyone came in. The saddest part of the museum was the visit to the orphanage cemetery. Over 300 children died while under state guardianship, and 198 were buried in the cemetery, unclaimed by their families. Some were buried under the uh, cover of darkness because of contagious diseases. Few, if any, ever had a flower left on their grave. Causes of death included measles, drowning, tuberculosis, exhaustion, and marasmus. Marasmus is defined as wasting and uh, emaciation of an infant for no discoverable cause. Today we would say failure to thrive for lack of love. Children also died from accidents, one killed by an elk, another a football injury, and a ruptured appendix. In the early years, tombstones were erected, but for unknown reasons, the state discontinued this practice. Children were then simply buried with their identification number etched on a cement slab. You can understand why this cemetery looks so sad? Usually in the cemeteries, most of the people have been buried by their families with the hope and expectation of resurrection. But the inhabitants of this children's cemetery were truly forgotten and abandoned. Not only were they abandoned at their birth and in their life, they were also abandoned at their death. The sign which par paraphrases the history of this cemetery has these touching words. Thank you for visiting this historic site and remembering these once forgotten children. Dear faithful, 
there is perhaps no feast in the year which can give us so much consolation and hope for the future as the Feast of the Assumption. All the graces and dignities of Mary uh, she now enjoys, they were earned during her life on earth. No one ever bore as much suffering as Mary, and no one ever reached the higher glory of paradise. She was the most humble, most unnoticed when she lived on earth, but she has the greatest place in heaven. One of the poems which the girls in the orphanage uh, sung showed their longing to their mother, and it went like this. I am a little orphan girl. My mother, she is dead. My father is a poor man who cannot weave no bread. I sit by the fire and hear the organs play. It sounds like my mother, but she is far away. Take good care, dear faithful, that in your life you don't reach to the worldly honors, but that you seek only those things which are in heaven. You might be abandoned and orphaned by the world for this, for, because of this, but you never are abandoned or orphaned by your own mother in heaven. I would also want to tell you to remember those who are much in need of your help, the suffering souls in purgatory. You might not often think of this, but the cemetery visit brought that clearly back to my mind that there are many of children in the purgatory as well, suffering because of sin and waiting your prayers to deliver them to their mother Mary in heaven. Uh, we know from the life of Saint Perpetua that while she was imprisoned by the cruel persecutors, she saw her little brother Dinocrates in a very dark place where there were many others, horribly hot and thirsty. His face was dirty, his complexion pale, with the ulcer in his face of which he died in, at seven years of age. There seemed to be a great distance between the brother and sister, so that it was impossible for them to come to each other. Near him stood a vessel full of water whose brink was very high. The little Dinocrates attempted to drink, but uh, though, though he had water, he could not reach it. After the end of the vision, Saint Perpetua knew that her little brother was in pain, but trusted that through her prayers she could save him. So she started to pray for him, begging God with her tears day and night that he would be delivered. Finally, she saw the same place as she saw before, now full of light, with Dinocrates, his body very clean and well clad, and him happily drinking refreshing water from the vessel. And then she knew he was relieved from his pain. Dear faithful, as Saint Perpetua prayed for her brother, Mary prays for all us sinners. She never abandons us or leaves us orphans. She is our mother, and like a good mother, she never leaves us until she sees us too in heaven. And in return of this great love of your heavenly mother, please, uh, please pray for poor souls and pray for your family uh, and dear ones, that we might all be, uh, and all be delivered in the end to the heavenly kingdom uh, with God the Son in heaven in the eternal paradise. Have a blessed feast of Assumption and God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.